Hello Internet! In this video, we're going to go over using uh, something called PyAutoGUI um, with Python. And what that allows you to do is automate the control of your computer, uh, the mouse movements, the typing movements, all that other jazz. Um, and for this, I'm going to use it to enter data into a program that's a bit hard to actually enter data in um, without using something like this. Now, I'm going to be using something called Anki, which is a program, and I'll explain what that Anki is in a second. Um, but you, you can import the data into Anki in another way. Um, I just felt like doing it this way because it's cool. And it's a sort of good illustration of what we uh, what we can do with Python and PyAutoGUI. So this program here is called Anki. Basically what you do with it is you can have uh, cards come up um, and you will have the answer on one side and the question on the other. And then what you can do is sort of memorize those sort of tasks. And what I'll do is I'll write down these sort of questions and answers as I go through, say, reading a book or something like that. I'll stick it in an Evernote. And then, because of the way I format it, it's a bit of a pain to go through and say, click on add, and then try and add something, and then add it again. It's a pain to do that. So, especially when I have like maybe a hundred cards from one book. So I want to write something that does all this for us. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So the first thing I've done um, is I've just got my latest points from a book I just read. Uh, some of these are pretty elementary questions, but basically the idea is the format of this file um, is going to be uh, the first thing is going to be uh, the question and the next one is going to be the answer. Um, so the indentation tells you which one's the answer and so on and so forth. So what we can do is read this file in and then automate basically typing in the answers uh, into Anki. So let's go ahead and uh, do that now. So to do that, let's just create a nice little Python file. And the first thing to do is to import py auto GUI. Oh my God, I can't spell that. And I'll import it as GUI. So I don't have to type many things. And I'm also going to import time so we can do some sleeping and what have you. Um, so the first thing uh, we need to do is really open the file. So for this particular example, I have a file I'm going to be opening. Obviously, you, you probably should follow along with this uh, using your own programs that you want to write as opposed to writing specifically what I'm writing right now. Um, so we're just reading in the file as Anki's. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sleep a very short while. Then we'll say Anki's. And what we need to do is we need to say Anki's read line. So we want to get all the file lines from this program like this and then we want to iterate over them and actually do some stuff. So first thing is let's say for i in range 0 len ankies. What I'm going to do is because we've got a question and answer format we're going to iterate over them in twos because obviously we want to iterate over the question and answer as a, as a sort of set. So we're going to do that. So we've got start at zero, go to the end of the array, and then do it in twos. Uh, and let's just check this sort of works. So if we do uh, print Anki's i, we should only really be seeing the questions. So if I was to do Python main. Ah, I've spelled Python also GUI wrong. <sighs> Creme de month. Already off to a bad start. Okay, uh, the problem is we haven't got a module named PyAutoGUI. I think I have it installed, so let's just try Python 3. Okay, so it's working, right. Um, so you can see here we've, we've just printed out all of the uh, questions. We haven't printed out any of the answers. So that tells me we are going through this in twos, because obviously the i is only going to be you know every two. So that's fine. So the next thing to do is we basically want to have some sort of way of actually adding the answers to Anki. Um, and the way we're going to do this is we're going to have, um, we're going to first define uh, basically a, a structure we can use, um, which we will have the answer and the question in. So the way we're going to do that is we're just going to say def create Anki strut question answer 
and we'll print out the question like that. So we don't need to print out the question, we've already printed it out built there. In fact, we don't need to print out anything, but all we're going to do for this is just return a dictionary with question and we need to return the question and we also basically want to, we want to get rid of the prefix that we had so all of them had uh, the prefix of uh, an asterisk with some spaces and that's just because of the way I the, the Evernote formats it when you take it out of Evernote so we need to actually define that prefix uh, so I think I have them saved in a text file somewhere but we'll call it Q prefix and the other one is going to be answer and same thing again we are going to say answer dot strip and instead say ands prefix like this oh my god he can't type okay now before I forget uh, let's close that off move that over there uh, we'll I'll quickly copy my answer and question prefixes like that so I knew I had those saved somewhere we've got them and so now we've got like a structure we can use to easily reference things. We could have just referenced these things by saying, you know, one and two, but it, it doesn't matter because obviously we're going to have, we're going to pass in one and two, right? So this is going to be I and then I plus one will be the answer. Uh, this just makes it a little bit easier to read. If we ever wanted to do anything else with the data, we could easily export it and know exactly what the hell everything was. So let's go and actually start doing some code so we'll do uh, add question answer we'll call it that and we'll pass in the Anki strut um, and what we'll do is we will potentially we could do a log method here but and just print out both of them I'm not going to do that first thing I want to do is do a little sleep for 10 milliseconds and then what we can do is we can use the piles of GUI typewrite method and we can pass in the Anki question like that and that will type out the question now I should point out I didn't explain why I was going to put in this sleep so part of this is that when we create this Anki we need to basically figure out where the cursor needs to go and because plenty of times you're not going to be on the same screen resolution like for example at the moment I'm on uh, a 27 inch monitor but if I was on my laptop without the screens then it will be a different resolution so if I was to say oh find me this particular pixel and start typing click there and start typing like you would normally it's a bit of a pain so what I've done is skip that step we'll just run the program and then we'll just click where we want it to go and it will, it will just start from that point on uh, just because it's a bit of a faff to sort of figure out where we need to actually start clicking once you've clicked the first time it's pretty easy so that's what we're going to do for that so we're going to we need to type right and then what we need to do is just press tab so we get down to the actual back so if we do tab we get down to the back uh, the back is the question is the answer so let's create a little method just called tab so we can just do this and the way we can do this is just say GUI press type in tab like that we didn't really need a method for that it's just a little bit quicker uh, especially if we wanted to reuse stuff I like doing these sort of wrapper methods around API's okay it also makes things a little bit easier to debug if let's say for example we're trying to figure out what the problem is you might find that we're never actually reaching these methods every time they're called for whatever reason but what we can now do is we can say tab after we've written the question and then we can just write the answer so if I just copy that because I'm lazy as hell and this time we just want to write the answer like that and actually after that we don't want to do a tab we want to press enter pressing enter will save the Anki so we need to now create a little method called enter and we can oh, just go type it out fresh call it enter and we'll say GUI press and guess what we're going to type in enter wow um, actually no we don't just thinking about it if we press enter what actually happens what actually happens if I press enter it just goes down a line so we need to actually press command enter so the way we press command enter is we're going to use um, firstly we're going to say 
key down. We're going to use the key down method. Say command. Uh, it'll probably be control if you're on Windows. Uh, I'm not sure what it'd be if you're on Linux, but you know you'll know your system. You can also have a look at the Pi Auto GUI uh, reference documentation, and that will tell you. And then after we've pressed enter, so we press basically we're saying hold down command, then press enter. Then we want to say bring command back up. So key up command. Otherwise, it will, everything it does from here on out will have command hold held down, which would you know do stupid stuff that we don't want it to do. This is one of the reasons why I like having those wrapper methods where I can I basically defined what I want. I know that I want to press enter here, but I'd have to type out command enter command every single time we wanted to do this basic thing. So it's one of the reasons why having these little wrapper functions could be quite nice. Finally, we want to do a little time sleep again like that and do we need to do anything else yes we do what we want to do is come back get rid of that login I don't really care too much about that in a moment we can then call add question answer and we can say create Anki strut and we're passing Anki's I and we'll pass in Anki's I plus one. So that'll be the question and the answer. Save that. And if we give it a little run, and this is where I say we sort of want to get ready to click real quick. So if I'm going to do enter, see I've messed up there. Part of the problem there is that I'm trying to move the thing and do it normally. I would have like half the terminal. In fact, we could do half the terminal. There we go. Oh, that's bright. So let's do this again because it always gets wrong every time I run a program on one of these videos. Okay, so what we do is we'll do the same thing. We'll get ready to click. So we're going to run the program and then click as soon as we do it because here we go. Entered. And there we go. We can see that it's doing it. It's going to then save it when it's finished the question. Okay, so it's going to, this is quite a long one. But there you go. This is now interacting with the GUI. And we don't have to do anything. We can just walk away from the computer while it does it. Now, what I've used this for in the past is uh, interacting with terrible software at work that we couldn't do anything with, but we've got to use it. So I used it, that to enter data that we couldn't otherwise just import. Uh, there are many other ring things you could do with this. I'm sure you've thought of things yourself. Uh, but hopefully you found this interesting. It's quite a short introduction to PyAuto GUI. Gives it, you a basic idea of some of the stuff you can do. Uh, so basically we've just done some typing pressing some keys there's also things like the click method where you could actually click with a mouse uh, and you would give it coordinates like i say part of the issue with that is knowing where to click the first time so it's why i like doing it where we have a sleep to begin with um, and then we can just click and it will just sort of work within the program we want it to work within um, so yeah hopefully you've enjoyed that obviously my program is still going it's probably going to be going for quite some time now but if you've enjoyed that, uh, you know, leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe for more. Uh, and leave a comment. If you have any questions, I'll try and answer them all. Although YouTube's notification system is getting worse and worse because I'm not getting told about half the comments. So it might be a bit delayed. I do apologize. But yes, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Ta-ta.